Okay, so I've sort of shown you how to, to get the various sounds within the sequencer. Uh, what I'll do now is just show you a few variations on that um, and the sort of the pre-programming in that I've done of the whole of the sequence from the original multiple voices but now with the filter kick and the, the new snare with hopefully without that high pitch note um, that you, you get with the original patch. So this is all programmed in now with the original melody um, using now the filter kick rather than the LFO kick and the snare. Okay, so you can hear there that everything's working well. You can sort of adjust things slightly to get you to where you want to be. All sounds good. So what we're going to look at now is sort of variations on the sounds that we've already obtained and also look at some really sort of cool ways in which you can modulate the clock, um, which I haven't seen too many videos online. I think there are a few, uh, but really when you start thinking about modulating the clock, it offers a whole new world of variation on the sequences and also starting to think about putting sequences into more of an arrangement. Um, I think one of the issues with sort of modular synthesis is because there's so much to go at, people sort of forget um, about arrangements and things like that. I think, and, and the synthesizers themselves, the patch bays and everything, they are set up so that you can move between patterns um, and you can do sort of finishes um, like you can raise the, the cutoff or whatever towards a finish or you can speed the tempo up so that you sort of get a transition. Um, it is quite difficult. Um, I think um, that's really where this is going, especially in terms of live performances. The person who sort of cracks how to really get this, get these synths to link together and produce a performance that's not too far away from the sort of the norm. I think a lot of people would think, oh, this is a future, it sounds so different, and I'll patch it in lots of different ways, um, and it's going to be a new sound. Um, but I think the first step is to get almost like the sort of sounds that are already around, like uh, electronic dance music and that, and get one of these things to do that. And once sort of um, they get to that, then that's really going to be something cool that can then be developed into what will probably be sort of a new genre of music um, without sort of jumping ahead too too much with, with any of that. Um, so, okay, so first of all, as you can see, and I thought of when I first started this video, I thought we weren't going to get a decent melody out of this patch because we're on sort of the high pass pit filter. But as you can see, I've programmed the melody in, and it sounds sounds fine, really. So we've got the melody, bass line, kick, and the um, snare without any sort of unwanted sounds. So we can let's just mess around with the kick for a bit. Now another way um, of getting the kick to sort of really jump out at you. Uh, is to put an accent on and it doesn't actually bring the snare in which is quite interesting with this patch arrangement so, which uh, on the original patch wasn't available I don't believe because you were accenting the note to generate the kick but with this patch you don't um, need to accent the note to generate the kick you're generating the kick through um, moving the, the mix uh, CV uh, with the keyboard um, to generate the filter kick, so um, you can you can still use the accent then to lift the brightness and the volume of the of the kick itself within your sequence. Um, so, so just to demonstrate that on um, sort of two of the kicks in the sequence. Um, so I'll put one here on page two, step one, and put one on page four, step one. And then we'll just listen to the difference between the, the kick that we originally had programmed in and now the accented kick. If we slow it down, you can hear 
hear the difference between the kick now. You've got a much higher, brighter kick. Step one on alternative pages of the sequence. That's the, okay, that's the high kick. That's the low kick. This is the high kick. That's the low kick. That's the high kick. So you can see um, another variation, another sound, um, all useful stuff. Just before I show you the variation on the, um, the snare sound, I did actually discover um, a little tweak to um, some of the sort of live stuff you can do with messing with the sequence, which I'll sort of demonstrate later in the video. Um, but I'll show you now because uh, it's fresh in my mind. I've only just sort of found this. Uh, again, great thing about uh, synths and modular in general is that you sort of discovering things every day, uh, which is is really really cool, really, because you're 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 sort of applying your knowledge and your learning at the same time, which is which is always fun. So what I discovered was that when you're in uh, step mode and you're running the sequence, you can sort of um, I think what you're doing is affecting the page that you're on, uh, and what it does, it actually affects the way that the, the notes are being played. So, so if I kept sort of tapping this, it, it does affect the way the sequence is playing. I don't, I'm not sure if this is in the manual, but it certainly has an effect. You can sort of, if you had a sequence probed in that, that was designed around that functionality, you could probably get a lot of use out of it. You can see there where I had a certain part of the sequence, so I was able to get quite a nice. I don't think holding it does the same thing, but if you tap it, and it's the same with the forward key. Sort of have a, has a different sort of effect. Like I say, I'm not sure if that's in the manual or if that's as designed, but it certainly does something. And again, if you had a sequence designed around that to sound good when you're doing that, uh, it would be quite cool. So that's again something something else to think about. Uh, so the other part of this was uh, trying to get a variation on the snare. Um, so uh, we may have to employ another sort of molt on here. Um, I don't want to sort of... Mm, okay, so yeah, I've got the keyboard patched in. Uh, I've got the sign. Okay, let's see. Okay, so just a, a warning with this, uh, you can connect one output from the Moog Mother into this. You cannot connect two outputs into this, into an input. So an output, for instance, is KB, which is the, the sort of white box, or silver box with the black lettering. Their outputs, just the silver lettering on their own, their inputs do not connect two outputs into this and then into an input because you're generating double voltages, which you don't want to do. So, but you connect one output like the KB to multiple, sorry, yeah, one output to multiple inputs. Okay, All right, so we'll take this KB into the mold and we will take the assign now output into the, effectively, A mold retain the previous patch and now what we want to do is where we have the accents to lift the snare if we want the higher snare in the mix we're just going to patch that into the VCA CV okay so let's listen to the sequence now because we put the accent on the kick also 
We're now hearing an even louder kick because the, the accent is, is lifting the VCA and CV. Now you may want that. Um, it doesn't balance as well with the low kick, so you might just want that as all your kicks are with this patch if you want to do a really loud kick at the rest of the mix. So just sort of go ahead and remove the accents from. So this is now uh, just lifting the, the snare with the VC patch. Again, you might want to just tweak it to suit. Now you can hear you've got a much louder snare. This is with that. This is with. You can hear on the accent, it really lifts the snare. Um, wonder what happens when we do it with the VCF cut off. So. So now what we're doing is uh, we're using the accent to also raise the VCF cutoff where we have the snares and instead of a snare we're getting a zap. So again that's another variation that you could explore. So we can try putting those accents on the kicks again with this patch variation and see what happens. Okay, so we're sort of affecting our kick and our snare. So we're getting some interesting variations there uh, with this patch on both the kick and the snare. Again, different sounds are always good to sort of play around with. I'm just messing around here with the cut off the resonance and the VCF mod, looking at different, changing the polarity, just to see what happens really. I think uh, maybe we'll try the, the LFO on the um, on the VCO Linear FM, just to see what that does with this new arrangement of sound. Okay, didn't quite work out. Let's just try different way of doing that.
so what we've managed to find again is something, another variation. It sounds a bit more industrial. Um, what we've done is we've used the VCF, VCF mod amount on the LFO, really turned the rate up on the LFO. Um, we changed the polarity of the kick, so it's sort of a down kick um, rather than a standard kick. Um, and we've brought the cutoff down because we're already sort of affecting the cutoff with this patch. Just getting the resonance in the right place to suit the patch. Sort of sounds better with less decay in this scenario. So yeah, just explore the sounds really. Start to get the melody back in there. So yeah, it's a completely different sound. It sounds nice with a saw. Hours, you can spend hours, absolutely hours. Getting some nice bassy sounds there. I mean, you can go on for literally hours. It would be cool if you had some more sequences program, uh, programmed in that you could switch between, so you're not just listening to the same sequence all the time. Get some really nice bass down. It's like I was saying before, if you build, uh, I think I was saying before, depending on which point I put this clip in the video, um, if you build a solid foundation, you can really mess with that to find some great stuff. Um, And you're really cooking now.